Today's education is going to be about stroke and the impact of receiving delayed care. So we might talk about why is this important, delayed care of a stroke patient. As a flight nurse, I've recognized that a lot of people will have stroke symptoms and wait to receive treatment. This impacts not only the treatment they can receive, but the overall possibility of recovery from a stroke. So let's talk about the things we're going to learn today. We're going to learn to define the two types of strokes. We're going to identify the signs and symptoms of a stroke. We're going to understand what should be done in the event of a stroke. We're going to talk about why time is so important. And at the end, we're actually going to take a look at a case study and see how delayed care can actually impact a patient. So first, let's start with the two different types of strokes a person can experience. The first type of stroke is known as a hemorrhagic stroke. Another way of thinking of this is a bleed. So a hemorrhagic stroke occurs when a blood vessel that is weakened ruptures. Now this can be caused from anything from high blood pressure through even suffering a traumatic head injury. The other type of stroke that somebody can experience is an ischemic stroke. So basically what an ischemic stroke is, is an obstruction in a blood vessel. And that blood vessel is one that supplies oxygenated blood to the brain. Now ischemic strokes are far more common than hemorrhagic strokes. In fact, it accounts for 87% of all stroke cases in the United States. Now while both hemorrhagic strokes and ischemic strokes are very important to recognize and treat, we're going to focus mainly on the ischemic stroke patient as we move forward through this lecture. So let's take a look at some signs and symptoms of a stroke. If you are experiencing an ischemic stroke, you may recognize facial drooping. This could be on one side of the face, and you may recognize it in the corner of the mouth, around the eye, or potentially even the eyebrow. One way of even checking for this is by either looking in the mirror or having the family member that is experiencing the stroke look at you and tell them to smile. A really big smile that shows their teeth, and if one side of the mouth does not move or one side of the face does not move equally, then that could be facial drooping. A second symptom you might recognize is some arm weakness. If you're experiencing a stroke, you may be carrying your coffee in the morning and you drop the coffee cup. That could be weakness in that arm. Or potentially you go to reach over your head and one arm will not come up as high as the other. That may indicate arm weakness. Another sign would be speech difficulty. Now this could be problems speaking yourself or understanding the speech of somebody else. So when we look at this, I may be able to form words without slurring, but the sentences I form make absolutely no sense. That's a speech difficulty. Or if somebody's talking to me and I don't know what they're saying to me and I'm very confused, that is also a speech difficulty, along with what most people would recognize as a speech difficulty, which would be slurring or the inability to even form words. So we've looked at these three main symptoms of a stroke. Now, one thing that's very important and is the last letter in this acronym is time. Time is of the essence. It is one of the most important things that play a role in somebody's treatment of a stroke. So let's move forward and talk about what happens with treatment. Before we talk about treatment specifically, let's talk about what should be done if somebody is having a stroke. The first and most important thing that can be done is calling 911. Either yourself should call 911 or a family member should call 911 and get the ambulance moving towards you. I would not try to take yourself to the hospital. Don't ask a friend to drive you. The reason for this is the ambulance service have very trained professionals that can help identify a stroke. They'll run some very quick clinical tests by looking at you, asking you to smile, etc. 
And if they believe that you are having a stroke, they can call ahead to the hospital that they're taking you to, and that hospital can actually get some things rolling so that when you show up, you are met at the door by a team of healthcare professionals that are ready to handle your symptoms. Another very, very important thing that yourself or a family member can do is write down the time that you started feeling this way. So if you recognize some facial drooping, what time did that start? Or if a family member recognized that you are looking at them like you are confused when they're speaking, they should write down that time or at least make a mental note of it because you will be asked for that later. So why is time so important? As I said a couple slides ago, time can be one of the most important factors when it comes to treatment of a patient. Let's take a look at what happens to somebody that is suffering from a stroke. So during a stroke, blood flow is lost to part of the brain. As that blood is denied to that brain tissue, that tissue begins to die. There is absolutely no way of reviving or regenerating that brain tissue. So during a stroke, the mantra is, time is tissue, or in this case, time equals brain tissue. So how much tissue do you lose during a stroke? Well, approximately 2 million brain cells every single minute. That may not sound like a lot. The average person has about 100 billion brain cells. If we were to look at this in a mathematical sense, you can lose approximately 12% of your brain in about an hour. So if you're suffering from a stroke for an hour, that equates to 12% of your brain. So you might be thinking, wow, 12% of my brain and it's only been an hour. Man, I don't want to lose any more of my brain, so how are these people going to help me not lose more of my brain? Well. When you get to the hospital, the emergency staff, which will include emergency technicians, nurses, and doctors, are going to act very quickly to make sure that they obtain the test results that are necessary to ensure that they can correctly treat you. So what kind of tests are we talking about? First, you're going to get there and they're going to get IV access. Probably two IVs is about the best way to do it. Then they're going to get some lab work. Now this lab work is going to take a look at everything from your blood sugar levels through your kidney functions. This makes sure that as they move forward with the testing, everything is appropriate. Another thing they're going to do is a clinical evaluation called an NIH stroke scale. Now this testing is going to be repeated every 15 minutes if you receive specific treatment as we move forward. Also, this testing is very specific to you. So they will take a look at you in a sense of the things we talked about earlier. Facial symmetry, unilateral weakness, ability to read specific words, and they're gonna look at any speech deficits. After all these things have come back, they're going to be moving you in the direction of a CAT scan or a CT scan. This CT scan is going to take a look inside the brain and make sure, first off, that you do not have a hemorrhagic stroke. If there's a hemorrhagic stroke, your treatment will go a different direction. If it's ischemic stroke, then they can move forward with another type of treatment. So. They've determined you have an ischemic stroke. What are they going to do for you now? They will probably give you TPA. TPA is tissue plasminogen activator. Yes, I know that sounds like a very big name. But what does TPA do? It dissolves clots. So what happens is they will give you this medication. It will actually start to improve the blood flow to that part of the brain and allow for the blood to perfuse into the areas that have been denied. This way you do not lose any more brain tissue. TPA, or tissue plasminogen activator, is the gold standard for treatment of ischemic strokes. 
Okay, so the doctor has determined that you are having an ischemic stroke. And he tells you that. Well, you want to get this medication, TPA, the gold standard for ischemic stroke care. You want to get it now because you want to save as much brain as you can. Well, of course, there is some criteria that will go into receiving this medication. First of all, you have to be over 18 years of age. Second diagnosis of a ischemic stroke with measurable neurologic deficit. Well, what the heck does that mean? As before, we talked about an NIH stroke scale that would be performed. As they're doing this stroke scale, they're trying to see if you have a neurologic deficit or basically an inability to understand words or speak words or maybe weakness on one side or the other. That is what they mean by a neurologic deficit. And then third, and most importantly, it has to be less than three hours since the onset of your symptoms. As we were saying before, one of the most important things you can do is write down the time you started feeling weird or the time you recognized weakness. Also, as a family member, it's important for you to note that time because the doctor will ask you, when was the last time you saw this person normal? If it's been more than three hours, the TPA medication will not be given because it will not be helpful. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at Doreen. Doreen is a 55 year old female who has had a history of untreated high blood pressure, diabetes, and has smoked cigarettes for over 30 years. Doreen has had a cold for the past week and is resting on the couch watching TV, like we all do, when she tries to pick up the remote. Now, Doreen cannot seem to hold on to the remote and asks her husband to change the channel. Doreen's husband is having a hard time understanding Doreen because she seems to be slurring her words. So let's take a look at a couple different scenarios for Doreen. At 2.33 p.m., Doreen's husband calls 911 right away and writes down the time that she started acting a little strangely. At 2.53 p.m., Doreen's made it to the hospital within 20 minutes of her onset time because her husband called 911 and did not try to drive her to the hospital. Doreen comes in the door, and by 2.55, a doctor asks when the symptoms started, and her husband is positive that it was at 2.30. By 2.57, Doreen already has an IV, or two, has had labs drawn, and is clinically tested for a stroke by the NIH stroke scale. At this point, they're already wheeling her down the hall for a CT scan. By 3.10, Doreen's had all her testing and her CT scan. It's determined that Doreen has suffered from an ischemic stroke and the doctor orders TPA. By 3.20 p.m., Doreen receives her bolus and infusion of TPA. And by 4.30 p.m., Doreen's symptoms are starting to subside and her chance of complete recovery is very high because TPA works that well. What happens if Doreen's husband doesn't call 911 right away? Let's take a look at that scenario. So scenario two, 2.33 p.m., Doreen decides to lay down and see if she feels a little bit better. By 4.30, she wakes up and she decides to have her husband take her to the hospital because she's still not feeling well. And then they get stuck in traffic. Now it takes them an hour to get to the hospital from the time they've left. It's now 5.30 p.m. The doctor gets into the room and asks, when did the symptoms start? Well, Doreen's husband did not write down the time and cannot remember when it was. He thinks it's around 2 p.m. By 5.55 p.m., Doreen receives some testing. She receives an IV, has the labs drawn, clinically tested for a stroke with the NIH stroke scale, and then is taken for a CT scan. It's now 6.10. The doctors receive the results, and it's determined that Doreen has suffered from an ischemic stroke, but she falls out of our three-hour TPA window. It's now 6.30 p.m., and the doctor comes in and tells Doreen that 
she is not eligible for the clot busting medication TPA and she'll have to wait and see how much damage the stroke has caused. So let's take a look at some of the key points that we want to take from this learning today. First of all, the two types of strokes are ischemic, which is a clot. Once again, 87% of the strokes suffered are ischemic strokes. And then there's hemorrhagic strokes, which are also bleeds. Some of the signs and symptoms of stroke can be remembered with the FAST acronym. F is for facial droop, A is for arm weakness, S is for slurred speech, and T is for time. Once again, time is very, very important. What do you do in case of a stroke? Call 911 immediately. Do not try to drive yourself or have somebody drive you to the hospital because you want to receive treatment as quickly as possible. Once once you've called 911, you also want to document what time the symptoms started. And just to reiterate, why is time so important? The more time that goes by, the more brain tissue is lost. And TPA, the clot buster medication, can only be given within three hours of symptom onset. My recommendation is to develop a good plan and make sure that family and friends are aware of the signs and symptoms of stroke, what to do in case of a stroke. That way, if you do suffer from any of these signs or symptoms, you will receive the best treatment possible as quick as possible. Thank you for listening to this education today regarding stroke and how delayed care impacts the patient. I wish you all good health.